today as he produces a CO2 dragster using the scroll saw, drill press, hand drill, and dremel tool. Get plugged in and powered up with Dr. Zoom. Hello kids. Today we're going to continue in the video series on producing CO2 dragsters. Today we're going to be using power tools. There are many considerations in using power tools. The best one really is that we can convert this block of wood into our dragster design with very little effort. But we must be safe in doing this. We're going to go through several general points of safety for you in using power tools. And then as we use each power tool, I'll go over some specifics with you at that point. Safety is far more than just having safety goggles on. Let me show you many of the safety points that you need to know. Get permission and training required from your instructor before using any power tool. Keep your work area clean. Stay alert and use common sense when operating power tools. Be cautious when others are using power tools to avoid distracting them. Dress properly. Do not wear loose clothing or jewelry. Pull back long hair and contain it. Roll up any long sleeves. Be sure tool is off before plugging it in. Don't abuse the cord. Carry the tool by its body. Grasp the end of the cord at the outlet to unplug it. Remove any adjusting keys or wrenches before turning the tool on. Do not leave a running tool unattended. Always wear eye protection. Guards on power tools should be in place and used at all times. Don't force any tool. If it is not performing as you expected, ask your instructor for help. Clamp your work in a secure position, allowing both hands free for operating tools. Now that we've gone through some of the safety procedures, let's go ahead and start through the steps that are necessary for dragster production. We'll take our top view and side view of our dragsters that we've cut out, and we'll tape them in position onto our dragster blank the side view going on the side of the body blank and we'll tape it in position so that the back end where the cartridge goes is on the back of the body blank and we'll tape it in a couple places to hold it while we mark the outline with a pen. We finished drawing the outline of the side view, and before we take the side view off, we want to be sure and mark the position of the two axle holes for our dragster. We'll do that using a straight pin. We'll punch through the paper and into the wood at each of the positions where we need an axle hole. And now we may take off our side view and move to the top view. Now that we have the top view and side view drawn on the dragster blank, we're ready to begin the production process, the first step of which is to drill the holes for the axles and wheels. There's two different ways that we can do that. The preferred method is with a drill press. It assures you of having a perpendicular hole in your dragster. The other method, which if you don't have a drill press that you can use, would be to use a hand drill. That's what I'm going to show you first. But we're going to go through some safety procedures that you need to know about the hand drill. First of all, we need safety glasses. Ah, that's better. Second of all, any time that we have our long sleeves on, we need to be sure to roll them up before using any power tools. Let's cover some of the additional safety procedures that you need to know 
to use the hand drill. Hold the hand drill firmly to control the twisting action of the drill. The drill may stall if overloaded or used improperly, so hold the drill firmly in case of a stall and the accompanying twisting action and release the trigger immediately to turn the drill off. Always unplug the drill when changing bits. Support and clamp the workpiece to provide stability. Be sure to have a clear area for the drill bit to go through or a scrap piece of wood under the workpiece to drill into. When beginning the drilling process, run the drill on low speed to keep it in proper position. Once the hole is started, then full speed should be used. As the drill begins to go through the bottom side of the material, apply less pressure to the drill to keep the material from splintering. Run the drill as you pull the drill bit free from the hole. We're ready to drill our holes now, but first we need a drill bit in the drill. At the front of the drill, we have a drill chuck, which includes three jaws of the chuck. When we rotate the chuck, the jaws begin to come in, and if we insert the drill bit and rotate the chuck, the jaws will begin to grasp the drill bit, and to further tighten it, we'll use a chuck key, which we'll place in one of the three holes of the chuck and turn clockwise to tighten the chuck around the drill bit. We're using a 3 16 drill bit to drill our axle holes in the positions that we marked with a straight pin on the side view on the body blank. We'll position the tip of the drill bit directly above the mark on the body blank and we'll be sure to hold the drill perpendicular as we begin to drill. When we start drilling, we'll start the drill on low and as we begin to drill, then we'll go to full speed. And again, be sure that you hold the drill perpendicular in all directions to the body blank. You may want to have a friend help you align your drill. Now that we've drilled the front hole, we'll repeat the process for the back hole. The preferred method of drilling the axle holes is the drill press. It's preferred because it automatically keeps the drill bit perpendicular to the body blank as it drills the hole. Before using the drill press, let me go through a few of the safety features that we need to use with the drill press. Secure the workpiece to the table with a vise or a clamp. Have the instructor set the drill press to the correct speed for the material that you are drilling. Be sure the drill bit is securely locked in the chuck before using. Be sure the chuck key is removed from the drill before starting the drill. Make all adjustments with the power off. Adjust the table or depth to avoid drilling into the table. Clean the area before leaving the machine. Again, we'll use a 3 16 inch drill bit to drill the holes in our dragster. We'll insert the bit into the chuck of the drill press and turn the chuck so that the jaws grip the bit and then we'll tighten the chuck with a chuck key. We'll make sure that the drill bit rotates freely. And now we're ready to adjust the table. We want, when the drill bit comes down, we want the table to be above the end of the drill bit. So we'll loosen the clamp of the table, and we'll move the table up a little bit. And there it comes down to below the depth of the table. Now we need to make sure that the blank 
will still go in underneath the drill bit, which it does. We'll want to position the blank so that the drill bit will come down directly onto the mark that we made with our straight pin in the side drawing. Once we have that position, we'll clamp the dragster blank onto the table. We'll recheck the position, making sure that's where we want to drill the hole before we ever turn the drill press on. Once we're sure that everything is set and ready to go, I'll turn the drill press on, I'll rotate the handle to bring the drill bit down through the wood, and then I'll release the handle. Once I've released the handle, I'll turn the drill press back off and we'll have drilled the hole. So here goes. We'll release the clamp, and there we have the hole in the rear of the dragster. We'll turn the dragster around, position the front hole where we want to drill it, clamp it again, making sure that the drill is going to come down directly onto the point where we want the hole. We're ready to drill the hole. And there we have it. We're now ready to start on the cutting procedure to cut out our dragster. For cutting out a dragster using the top view and side view, we're going to be using our scroll saw. The scroll saw uses a very thin blade which reciprocates or goes back and forth in an up and down motion to cut the wood. It is very much like using the coping saw in its action, however it produces a much smoother cut. You can use either basswood or balsa with a scroll saw, but if you're going to be using basswood, you may want to consider using a bandsaw. Check with your instructor to see what is available and what your instructor would recommend. Of course, in using the scroll saw, we must use the proper safety procedures. Let's go through some of those now. Do not force the material into the blade light pressure is adequate for cutting. Feed the material into the saw blade front on. Do not apply force to the left or right against the blade. Do not cut material too small to be safely supported. Always keep hands and fingers away from the blade. Do not attempt to saw anything that does not have a flat surface on the table unless a suitable support is used. Make relief cuts before cutting long curves. Always hold the workpiece firmly against the table. Do not feed the material too fast while cutting. Take your time. Never perform layout, assembly, or setup work on the table while the saw is on. Turn the saw off before backing the workpiece out of an uncompleted cut. Stop the saw before removing scrap pieces from the table. Shut off power and clean the area before leaving the machine. We're ready to cut out the side view of the dragster now. And I'm going to begin at the back of the dragster, cut this long curve, and then we'll exit the blade down through here. Then I'll cut out this small piece this piece, and then this piece. So we're just about ready to begin cutting, 
we'll make one adjustment on the scroll saw, and that is to position the guard, the blade guard, down onto the wood so it holds it securely against the table and the wood does not come up on us. You can see that I've cut the top view off and cut it out right at this point. Let's cut the rest of the pieces. And there we have the side view of the dragster completely cut out. Now we're ready for the top view. We'll collect all the pieces that we cut off and we'll reassemble the dragster. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. like that. Now we'll take the masking tape and place it across each seam of each piece that we cut off. Along the bottom side. And we'll turn it over and put a couple pieces across the side view. and rotate it and do the same thing on the other side of the dragster. And now we have it all taped back together and we'll proceed to cut out the top view of the dragster. Now this may present a problem solving activity for us in that the depth of the scroll saw will not be enough to accommodate the back end of this dragster. So we're going to do the front end of the dragster, we're going to cut it out and then we'll figure out how to do the back end of the dragster. For cutting out the top view we'll need to raise the guard to its top position and we'll be sure to hold down on the dragster body while we're cutting to keep it from moving on us. Let's start the saw and begin cutting out the top view. So now we've cut out as much of the top view as we can. You can tell that as we approach this point of the dragster, we can no longer get the wood underneath the scroll saw. So we have a couple choices at this point. We can cut the remainder of the top view using a coping saw, which is a hand tool, or my solution is to take the top part of the dragster apart and leave the bottom portions of the dragster remaining taped together and I'll have to tape this back in a couple spots. 
and we'll redraw along the top, we'll redraw the top view onto this dragster. We'll place the top view of our working drawing on top of the dragster, aligning the back end with the back end of the body, and we'll redraw onto the wood where we need to cut. So now we'll be able to cut the back portion of this along these lines, and this part will go underneath the scroll saw. So now let's go ahead and start the saw and make our final cuts. Now we can remove all the parts of the dragster. And we have our general dragster design cut out. I have here two dragsters, the one that I just cut out using the power tool and the scroll saw, and the one that I cut out using a coping saw. You can tell the difference in using power tools and that you get a much better result with the power tool. It's much more accurate, it has a smoother cut, so now there'll be less sanding to make the finished product. After we have the dragster cut out, we're ready to begin the general shaping of the dragster, and there's a couple different processes we can use to do that. If we have a basswood body blank, we'll probably want to use a belt sander like this one. This will help take off the corners of the dragster blank, the sharp corners, and will help uh, get it smooth down to a sanding point. If you're using balsa for your dragster, you probably won't use the belt sander much as it takes a lot of wood off in a hurry. Let's go through a few safety pointers for the belt sander. Hold the work firmly while sanding. Always sand on the downward side of the disc so that the workpiece is being forced down onto the table. Sanding on the other side of the disc could cause the workpiece to fly up, possibly causing personal injury. Always maintain 1 16th inch minimum clearance between the table and the sanding disc or belt. Do not sand pieces of material that are too small to be safely supported or held securely. Never turn the sander on before clearing the table of all objects, tools, wood scraps, etc. Avoid awkward hand positions where a sudden slip could cause your hand to move toward the sanding disc or belt. Shut off power and clean the area before leaving the machine. We can use the belt sander to smooth curved areas like this before we begin the hand sanding. It can also be used in areas like this to take out any of the cut marks left by the scroll or bandsaw. Let's turn the sander on and do a little sanding on this body blank. The Dremel tool operates at a very high speed. In fact, it goes 30,000 RPMs, or revolutions, per minute. We also have a version which is a cordless Dremel tool, and it goes 5,000 to 10,000 RPMs, depending upon whether you have it set on high or low speed. The Dremel tool has accessories, such as these cutting and grinding tools, sanding pads, and sanding drums. And there are many other Dremel accessories that you can purchase that will help you do the general shaping on your dragster. Before we begin using the Dremel tool, let's go through some of the safety precautions that are associated with this tool. Unplug the Dremel tool before making any adjustments or changing accessories. Be sure the collet nut is tight after changing accessories. Wear safety goggles and a dust mask. 
Do not reach in the area of the spinning bit. Keep your hands at least six inches away from that bit. Never use dull or damaged accessories. Clamp either the workpiece or the Dremel tool in a stationary position. Do not hold the workpiece in one hand and use the Dremel tool in the other. Never start the tool when the bit is against the workpiece. Avoid bouncing or snagging the bit, causing it to be possibly jerked from your hand. I'm going to go ahead and put my dust mask on and begin the sanding process using the Dremel tool. We'll use the Dremel tool in this case to sand along this curved surface and to round off these corners. Let's start the tool and do some sanding. <laughs> As you can see, the Dremel tool takes a lot of wood off in a hurry, so you have to be very careful not to sand too much. Another way that we can use the Dremel tool is to have it clamped into a Dremel stand, holding the Dremel tool stationary while we use both hands to work with the dragster body. Let's go ahead and do a little more sanding on the dragster body with the Dremel tool in its stand. Along with the Dremel tool and all the other power tools that we used, we'll probably still have to use some of our hand tools to do finishing on the dragster. For instance, this tool, which is a carving tool, may be handy in places to use it rather than the power tools. Or our sanding stick in places where it's difficult to get in and get a smooth finish. There may be occasion to use the Sureform plane or there may be a point where we would want to use our round file or rasp. All of these tools will be very handy, plus another tool that I found, which is the sanding sponge. It allows us to sand in tight, curved surfaces and get a nice finish. The sandpaper that came with your Pitsco kit is also of great value and getting your dragster shaped just the way that you want it. So let's do a little work now using all our hand tools and sandpaper and we'll get this down to a shape that we can be proud of. Oh, hi. I'm just finishing up doing the fine and final sanding of our dragster. You can see now that we've gotten into a much better shape, much smoother, and overall it's very smooth and contoured just the way that we want it. I still have a few minor deformities that I need to take care of and I'm going to sand those out with our 320 grit wet dry sandpaper. And once I get those out, we'll be ready to go on to the next video, which is going to be dragster finishing. I'm going to keep sanding on my dragster until it's perfect for me. So, until my next video, which will be finishing the dragster, I'm just going to keep sanding. And you know what? I'll see you real soon. <laughs>